what's going on? So now listen, if you watched yesterday's video and you're watching today's video and you're saying, man, this guy wears the same shirt every day. I just made that video and I'm making this one right now, but I'm not releasing it because the way the algorithm, algo, algorithms work on YouTube, you don't get credit for um, multiple uploads in the same day. It, from what I've heard, it, it like sparks your account if you upload within 24 hours, but then if you upload again within that 24 hours, it doesn't do anything for you. You can make more money if your account's popping like that, but you know, my account is like in the YouTube graveyard. So I'm gonna try to do like one every day. I'll do that for a few days and it's probably gonna end up where I'm only doing one like every week and then you might not see me again for a couple months. That's, you know, usually how it works out. But well, for now I'm back. The topic, today's video, something so controversial. How could I be saying rap posts deserve a second look? second chance let me tell you something nobody hated that rack pull craze like i did and if you hated it like i did then you hated it on the same level as me not more than me because i hated it and for years i couldn't even watch any alpha destiny videos all i knew about him was rack pulls and i just totally discredited him as anybody and you know after that whole thing happened he started doing these big benches and everything i actually watched his channel i commented on some of the videos and i think the guy's got some good content and he's a really strong dude but that whole rack pull thing i just hated it i hated it pulling a weight four inches you're pulling double your deadlift it's just stupid and then it became a big craze and i'm just a contrarian at heart i just hate things that are gimmicky and trendy and if everyone's doing something i just by nature i just always go the other way so i hated that craze so why would i say the rat pool might deserve a second look well that's because there's two different things i'm not talking about the above the knee rat pool see we all know there's the above the knee rat pool which people went crazy for and then there's the below the knee rat pool now why are they so different and why does one deserve a second look and is actually a very good assistance exercise and the other one's garbage well i don't know if the above the knee rack pull gives you muscle growth i'm not a bodybuilder i'm not really concerned with muscle growth that much that's not my main goal my main goal is to get stronger and to get stronger on the big three okay so the above the knee rack pull is not helping me see i look for assistance exercises that are going to help me get stronger on my main lifts my main lifts are squat bench and deadlift so the Above the knee rack pull would be an assistance exercise for the deadlift. But the reason it's a garbage exercise and it has no carryover, no transfer to the to the conventional deadlift is because it's not the same thing. At the top of the deadlift, you're doing a hip hinge. At, at a high above the knee rack pull, you're doing a hitch. You're, you're ramping the weight up your thighs. That You'll get red lighted for that. So there's no carryover in that. You need to do a hip hinge. and so, But that's the thing. Now, for people whose sticking point is just below the knees like me, I'm fast off the floor with the deadlift. That's because my quads are strong in the lift. I pop it right up off the floor where I run into trouble is below the knees. That's when I start getting the earthquakes and I got to really grind it out. So for me, a great assistance exercise is the RDL, the Romanian deadlift, because that accentuates that part of the lift. I'm, I'm just focusing on that one part of the lift, the hip hinge, not the quads uh, off, the, um, off the floor. So that's why the RDL is very tough for me. And that's why it's what I planned on incorporating into my new routine, my new training program. But let's think about this for a second. What is the RDL? The RDL is where you unrack the bar and you start the deadlift in the eccentric. So you're loading it, you're coming down and then you get in the stretch reflex right there at the sticking point, right there where you start to bend your knees. You're coming down to the bottom of the hip hinge, you're loading up the weight, you're getting that, that on stretch reflex and then you're coming back up. And then you keep doing that, down, up, down, up. You're loading up on the stretch reflex, you're coming down to the furthest point where you could keep your back in extension, the furthest point of the hip hinge, and then you're coming right back up. Now, that's a great assistance exercise for people like me who struggle once they get it halfway up their shins. But now let's think of something. What's even harder than an exercise with a stretch reflex? An exercise where you take the stretch reflex out, right? Think about squats. Squats, you're loading up the eccentric, and then when you get to the bottom and you're in the hole, you load it up your hamstrings, and now you get that stretch reflex at the bottom, and you come up. That's why something like an Anderson squat or a pin squat is harder than a regular squat, because you're taking out the eccentric. Just like a deadlift, you're starting at the concentric. You got to press as hard as you can right from the beginning of the lift there is no loading up that's why with the deadlift i try to 
pull into it so I could create eccentric, just like an overhead press. The overhead press was starting at the concentric, right? That's why I try to create an eccentric by starting right below my chin and dipping down, getting a little stretch reflex, and then coming overhead. So now let's bring this back to the topic of the video. What can make a great assistance exercise for people whose sticking point is halfway up the shins? Like uh, the great assistance exercise like the RDL for people whose sticking point is halfway up the shins. What can make that even better exercise? Removing the eccentric. And what would that be if we remove the eccentric from our RDL? A below the knee rack pull. So that's why I started doing those today. I went just really, really light just to fill them. I'm coming back from an injury. Not a serious injury. Injured my back about... 10 years ago doing deadlifts and it's just something that's always going to be there so it's just something i got to be conscious of but while i was training for a powerlifting meet i overexerted myself because i did a deadlift party which you can see back on my um in my history of my videos did the deadlift party and that's not where i injured my back but that's where i weakened my back doing 405 for like 15 reps first i did 515 for a single then i did 405 for about 15 reps i think then the next week I came back, and this is also on there, and I was doing pause deadlifts with about 435. Now my back was already vulnerable. And this is the thing too, it's been shown that the majority of injuries don't come from bad form, they come from overuse. Okay, so we're pushing too hard, we don't know our limits, and then our back becomes weakened, and then it just gets hurt from doing something where you might even be using good form. And I was using good form on the pause deadlifts, you can see in the video, but I just tweaked my back a little bit, I tweaked this old injury, and now, instead of being smart and saying, let me ease off, let me fall back for a little while, I was like, yo, your back's weak, you can't handle deadlifts because you have a weak back, the, the best way to cure that would be to do more deadlifts. So you think about it, I hurt my back doing deadlifts, and I thought the cure was to continue doing them and keep going harder. And then that's the reason I stopped making videos because from that point on, I just kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And I didn't even want to post it because I'm like, I'm getting weaker. And every time I was feeling weaker, I said, okay, I got to go harder. And all that did was aggravate the injury more, it caused more inflammation. And finally, it got to the point where I was having trouble even walking straight up. I was being pulled to the side. Everything was tight. I went and do squats. I did um, a top set of 375 for a triple, but on the same day I did 375 for a triple, I wasn't even able to do 10 body weight squats. So I just finally said, you know what? I'm pulling out of this meat. It's not worth it. I can't even walk right. I'm way too tight. I need to work on mobility. I need to let this inflammation in my lower back go down. And that's what I've been doing for about the past six weeks. And I'm feeling a lot better. That's why I said just um, earlier today, I was working on the rack pulls. But like I said, I think the rack pull is worth a second look. I think the problem is that we're grouping both type of rack pulls together. We're just calling it rack pulls. We're not saying below the knee or above the knee. So that's why this is my case for giving the rack pull a second look. All right, guys, more videos to come, but I'm going to be wearing the same shirt because I'm making a few videos tonight. So I got a bunch in the hole ready to go. A bunch in the can. That's the um, show business term. So I have a few in the can ready to go. All right, until next time.